Hello, today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to create this very popular advertising image style for cosmetics. And no matter what 3D software you're using, by watching this video, you'll know how to set it up very simply in your 3D software. So if we start off with our scene setup, you'll see it's a very simple scene. We have our floor here with a bend modifier to bend the floor. And then we've got our five products sitting in the middle. Here we have our camera, we've got a top light, We've got a light for the floor and then a light for the background. And then here in the front, you'll see we've got one light on the left, one light in the middle and one light on the right. With our products, you want to make sure that you're ordering them in this kind of triangular pattern. So the tallest one, the biggest one goes in the middle, then it goes from smallest to smallest down the left, smallest to smallest down the right. But then also at the top, you'll see there's another triangular pattern. The biggest and tallest product goes at the front and then it goes smallest and smallest backwards. And now you're getting this kind of triangular fall off, ordering from the products from the front to the back and also from the tallest to the smallest. And because our camera is centered nicely, our products are centered nicely, we get this very symmetrical and ordered looking scene. So this is very simple to set up and I'll show you how. Let's start with the geometry. All we've used in the scene is a cylinder and square for all of our products. So it's very simple to set up. If you take a look at this middle product here, if I turn off the smoothing, you'll see all we have is cylinders with added lines to help support the edges and harden out these edges here. But once we smooth it out, you'll see that it's pretty much just a cylinder with some lines added to harden the edges. Same as this bottom piece here, it's just a cylinder. We've got two added lines at the bottom to harden those edges once we do smooth it out. If you look at this one as well, this one might appear more complex at the beginning if you're a beginner. But once you take a look at the geometry, you'll see that this is just a cylinder as well. All I've done is I've taken a cylinder and I've just squashed it. You know, I've added in lines in the middle and then I've just squashed those lines as we go further up. So here, if I had to take some of these lines and expand them out again, you'll see how our cylinder shape starts to form back together. And now here we've got our original cylinder is starting to come back. So this is just a cylinder. You take, let's say this edge loop here and you just squash it inwards. And that's how you get this top part here where it's really squashed up over there. And then all I've done is I've just taken some of the points on the sides and then just push them down. You can take these points here and then just push them down so that we have a bit of a fall off with the lighting. And this is just the way the product looked like in real life. This is why I ended up pushing, you know, these ones down as opposed to having them high up like that. And then once you do smooth out this object, you'll see this is the end result that you get. So you can create this kind of object very, very quickly within a couple of minutes, just using a cylinder. If we look at the bottom part, this as well, just using cylinders. So here I can go and solo these in the viewport and if i reveal the geometry here so i've taken a few faces on the side here let's say i took these ones and then i just go and extrude it inwards like that delete some of the bottom faces reconnect some of the lines that are you know have open holes and just close those holes up and now you get this area over here um so this is also quite simple to set up and then once you do smooth it out this is the look that you get bottom part just a cylinder i've just added in extra lines so that when we do smooth it out the edges are harder over there and it's not you know super soft so these are very simple to set up you just create cylinders you know you add a lot of lines on the edges so that the edges are harder if you don't want the edges to be as hard then you can remove a line or just move a line further away from the bottom and you'll get a rounder edge and that's pretty much how you set that up now if we look at this over here you can see this is pretty much just a cube i haven't even turned this into editable geometry it's just a cube with some beveled edges and we just apply our product graphic onto that this as well this is just a cube so if i just go and maybe i'll go into the editable mode here select some of these lines here you'll see if i remove the smoothing this is what the core geometry looks like. And if I had to get rid of these lines here, you'll see now our cube shape is just showing up. All I've done is added in lines on the edges so that when we do smooth it out, these edges are harder and they're not so soft and smoothed out. And then I've also added in a line in the middle here and two lines in the middle there so that I can scale them out. Because if they're not scaled out and they're just pushed in, it'll look like just a normal kind of box. So I've just added in some lines there so that I can 
push them out and I'll get this general shape. And this all depends on, you know, the products that you're dealing with, but you know, you can set these up very, very quickly just using cylinders. This one as well down here, this was just used creating a cylinder as well. So just cylinders, you add some lines so that some of the edges are harder and you where you position these lines depends on your product and how round you want the edges to be. The same as the bottom here. And then all of you done is just applied our textures on top of that. So if we go back into our texturing here so we can see the materials and the textures, all I've done with these is I've just applied cylindrical projection mapping. With these products, you don't need to do any UV mapping or anything like that. It's like 99% of the time, I never have to touch UV mapping at all. Just use projection mapping. And we've just applied cylindrical UV mapping on all of these, except the cubes are in cubic form or flat mode with a projection mapping but otherwise it's just cylindrical UV mapping. If I go and move these, you can see it's just applied that way because you know we're dealing with cylinders. So it's very simple and very quick to set these up. Um, if you look at our actual texture, you can see this is the texture and the graphic that we have. This is just a square Photoshop document and all of the stuff I created myself, typed in the text myself, you know, the C, all of the stuff was typed in myself. If we look at this, this is just a rectangle with a gradient applied this one as well rectangle with a gradient applied the background is white and we have you know a couple of these bubble images and that's as simple as uh, the graphic needs to be nothing too complicated here uh, it's just text with some rectangles and an image applied and then once you take this you apply it to your diffuse or your color, whatever it might be, whether you're using Blender or Cinema 4D. And then you put, you paste that in here and then it's a 2K texture. And then you just apply it to your object. You select cylindrical UV mapping. Let's say this one, cylindrical projection mapping. You make sure that you just fit it to your object correctly. And then this will fit nice and snug onto your object. If you look at the material structure, very simple. We just have one graphic material here and one gold material for the actual C. And then here we just have one mixed material that's saying we're going to use this Photoshop document to define that I want everything that's in black here to be a mask. So this will be our C because I want to mask, you know, the difference between our graphic on the bottom, the gold on the top, and I want that to be masked by the C. That means that when we apply it, the gold will then be applied to just the C itself and not the rest. So now we have a gold material, which has its own properties and stuff. We have a graphic material, which has its own properties. And then a mixed material that says the C area should be gold or the C area should be material one, which is our gold. If this, if this was inverted, then, you know, they would say that everything else should be material one. So that's how that works. And you apply it to, you just replace your texture that you had applied here like that. And then once you apply it, then, you know, you should have gold on the C part and the rest should just be the graphic material. Now the same octane mix material is applied to all of the objects. Um, so they're all using one texture. So it's very simple and that's pretty much it. If we take a look at the actual graphic itself, very simple setup. Specular default, roughness default, no bump maps, normal maps, displacement maps, the index is 1.3, just a very default looking material. The gold, this one has an index of eight. Specular has a more gold color, but then the roughness is, um, you know, 0.3, but no bump map, no normal map, none of that stuff. People think that in order to achieve photorealism, you need like a lot of bumps and scratches and stuff like that. That's not really the case. Now, if we go back into our render view here, you'll see what we've got over here. The top part, you know, I'm just using a basic diffuse material. Again, just a white color. Here you can see everything is set default no scratches and all of that stuff. And then our floor, it's just a glossy material with a reflective floor and the color is blue, you know, index 1.3. Everything you can see is very simple and pretty much just set to the default render settings. Now lighting and camera is where a lot of the work and the heavy lifting comes in. This is where a lot of people screw up. Assuming that you've modeled your things correctly, your textures aren't like low resolution or warped or stretched in any way. The lighting is where a lot of scenes fall apart and the camera angle. So if we had to take a look at the camera angle first, this is what a lot of people do with their scenes. The camera is just straight looking at the product Product. Now, if you want your products and your render and your image to have a nice wow factor where it looks like the products are big and beautiful, it's good to just angle your camera slightly lower so that it's pointing up 
which you know makes your products appear as if they have more power to them they appear bigger which makes your image look better versus if it's straight on like this the camera is one of the biggest areas with my students where i see that they mess up often a lot of their scenes and the way it's set up is fine it's just their camera angles are just too plain and too boring and it's always the same so you want to make sure that you're creative with your camera so that you can get the best looking renders now the lighting this is where the good stuff comes so if we break down all of our lights you'll see that we have one light on the right and we have a gradient applied to it then we have one light on the left we have a gradient applied to it so these are our basic fill lights this is where people usually stop <laughs> they just have one light on the right one light on the left maybe they have a light in the middle like this one which just adds a nice fill in the middle but as you can see the the scene it like it feels a bit bland right and that's because a lot of people don't focus on the whole scene itself. They just like the products and they don't think and consider their environment that their products are in. In this case, we have a studio set up, so we need to take into account our background. How can we make our products have this very shiny, very wow glow effect like it's new? You know, a lot of products and cosmetics is like 3X this, 20, 2023 version, all of the stuff and the new marketing material, right? So you need to really make that stuff shine. Background lighting is another area where, where people screw up assuming that you know your textures your materials your models the render settings all of that stuff is set up like the background is where people neglect if we had to add in our backlight here you'll see the difference that it makes this backlight adds a nice glow to the product what that does is it makes your eye focus on the center of the frame it makes the products look like there's this glow this wow factor to it and it just makes them stand out right so i've added a background light which adds a glow behind it it also adds gradients into your scene adds a gradient to the background which adds more contrast i speak a lot about gradients with my students because it's one of the biggest things that you know makes your image stand out and seem less flat we've also added a backlight from a light actually pointing towards the camera and shining against the products the reason why we do that is because that'll add in a lot of lights on the edges and behind it and also give it more of a glow so here if i add in this backlight you'll see now we have a light that's facing towards the camera that's behind the products and gives the products a glow this is especially important when you're dealing with like glass materials but even here you'll see it adds a bit more of a glow to the image i've also added in a floor light to light the floor so that the products where they're standing is not very dark and it has a bit of a glow to it so it, it it makes the product seem even more like they have a shine and these are all done simply with octane lights so if you're using blender um, or 3ds max the lighting setup would be the same you just add in area lights like this you can apply gradients to the texture area and now you'll see what we get with our actual scene setup here it's the most simple scene setup you could see nothing complicated when i did renders i didn't do like multi-pass rendering and have like 10 different materials and all this complicated stuff set up because you know you want to keep things simple and effective and now in the end you'll see that the image that we get so if we had to take a look at our render settings here i've set the diffuse and the specular to 30 just so that we have a lot of light bounces it helps with global illumination and just making our scene look glowy and shiny now the camera imager by default if you're using a linear setup which is what i always recommend to all my students here you'll see what it gets and it looks a bit flat you need to drop the brightness of the lights and stuff to deal with exposure i recommend doing contrast and adjustments in like post but if you really want you can also do it inside of octane so in order to add in contrast and add in more of the saturation and stuff we can drop our gamma quite a bit right so now you can see we've added in a lot of contrast more saturation but in order to compensate for this dropping the gamma darkens the image so now we can actually increase the brightness over here and now you can see just baked into the render we've added in some contrast and some glow and stuff like that this is a problem going forward if you you know need to make changes and reduce the contrast and stuff like that you know that's where it's better to do it in photoshop because you can adjust things but you know if you're fine with this and you don't need to make crazy changes in post then you know it's fine to just render this out and bake it like this and because we have highlight compression on here you can see it with it off this is another problem that people run into here the lights are way too blown out but because we have highlight compression on we have a high dynamic range image that has a lot of contrast a lot of brightness it looks nice and punchy you know the lighting setup is nice the camera angle is nice the way the products are ordered is nice and then afterwards once you add in all your advertising text and all of that stuff 
it appears like a very high quality image, especially if you render this out at like 2K resolution, you'll start to see a lot of the detail. Now, if you look at the textures and stuff like that, you know, this gradient was applied in Photoshop. These bubbles are applied in Photoshop. The materials are default. All we're using is a couple cylinders and a couple cubes. We've got five, six lights in here and a floor. And that's as simple as the scene needs to be. And yet we're producing a very high quality looking image. Often my students overcomplicate things and think that more is better. So they add in a lighting setup that's way too complex. They add in materials that's way too complex. Their render settings are all over the place and that's what results in a bad looking image. It's better to focus on the fundamentals, keep your workflow light. You'll have less stress, a better quality outputs and save yourself a lot of time. So apply these things to your work to produce more professional results. If you'd like to get coached by me personally and have me break down your projects and join other students that are also learning how to create professional 3D renders and get high paying clients in 2023, click the link in the description, check out our free training video and schedule a call with us. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and have a good day.